Hi, how are you guys doing? My name is Ishat Rose and you guys can call me Chat Rose. This is Tinker Cat with Chat Rose. Potential meter. Okay, so I want to teach you guys about potentiometers, which is my favorite part about Arduino circuitry. But before that, I need to talk a little bit about Tinkercad. So what we're going to use to design our Arduino circuits um, today is by using Tinkercad website. So you can access this website by going to tinkercad.com and then creating your account. Okay, and then after you've done all that, it will bring you to this page. So let's talk about what is Tinkercad. So Tinkercad, if you've seen the name, it has two parts there, okay? The Tinker part and then the Cat part. So the Cat part is actually an acronym for C meaning computer, A meaning assisted, D meaning design. So it's a computer assisted designing process. So what Tinkercad means that you can tinker, make stuff using the help of computers. So this website will help you make designs, you can make 3D, uh, I mean like 3D designs, you can make circuits, and then you can also program using just code blocks instead of like typing all the weird symbols and stuff. So um, right now, let's go to circuits and then create new circuit to start with our lesson. So now you've created the, uh, a new circuit project. So here you can see that there's a, a few menus here. So there's a menu on the top here. That's a bit later for when you're designing stuff. But right now, look into the right side. There's a menu for components. So right now, I want you to search A R D U I N O Arduino. So this will be the brain of our circus. Don't be afraid. Even though it looks complicated, it does scare me at first when I first started. It's actually not that hard. So the Arduino circuit. Uh, can be connected you, to your computer using a USB. So here, there's a USB port here. And then there's also a few pins, but all these pins serve somewhat similar functions. So here you can see there's power pins. So here uh, the 5V one and the ground one is the most important one for us today. And then there's also analog in, so the A0 to A5. And then there's also a digital. So the digital pins range from 0 to 13, right? And then there's also a ground pin from the top. And then uh, you also need to add in a breadboard. So bread like the bread you eat every day. Uh, this is for you to connect all your circuitry and components up. So what you need to know about breadboard is if you want to add wires, you can click on any holes here. See that there's a red square. The red square means that if you click, you add in a wire. So see, right now I'm uh, pulling a wire from the hole. So if I press delete, I cancel. But if I click on the wire and then click somewhere, it will like make it turn and connect things. So say if I want to connect this wire to the Arduino board here, so the five volt one connected to the plus sign, what I need to do is click it here, pull it down uh, horizontally, and then connect it to the plus sign. And then I can drag around to make it more tidy. And then like maybe make it longer down there. To change the color of the wires, you click on the color you want to change, the wire you want to change, and then you can pick what color you want. So you can pick black, red, orange, and any other colors that are commonly associated with the rainbow. So right now, we're adding the wire for our 5 volt, so we change it to the red color. And then we want to connect the, the ground one here to the black, uh, to the negative terminal. To make it black, um, instead of pressing here, you can also see that, oh, the colors here have an order. So from the top here, the black is the first color, red is second color. You can actually press the key number, uh, the, the, the number key on your keyboard or like the number pad on the top of your keyboard there. Uh, say that you want the color yellow. The color yellow is the fourth from the top, right? So if you click on this wire and then you press four on your keyboard, it changes to yellow. So you don't have to like drop down. So but that, that one is a bit more like once you get used to Tinkercad. So right now I suggest you to just use this bar, right? So make it red and then connect the ground across and up and make it black. So this is the basic of the breadboard. Now, 
um, let's say you want to connect up an LED. So, uh, um, search up LED and then add that to your breadboard. So, let's say I place it here. Okay. Now, how to connect this wire to this wire? I can just do this. Okay. That, 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 that technically works. But, instead, I'll, I'll do what the breadboard is standard for is by connecting uh, is by if you hover the holes here you can see that there's a lot of green holes nearby these green holes tells you which ones are connected to which ones so say that I'm going to look at black here and this one is the horizontal two if I connect this one to this one this is actually a complete circuit. So if you follow from the power, red, go here, it can move horizontally across the wire and then horizontally again, back to black. So that is actually a complete circuit. But this is not, don't do this because they will, this will sh um, pretty much short circuit your Arduino, which is like bad thing to do. So please don't do this, like don't connect it. This is for example, to show you like, this is a working circuit, okay? Okay, so what you actually need to do is connect this positive with this anode. But instead of connecting it like this, you can also connect it like this because if you hover it over here, the anode here is connected with holes on this side. So this is a section that is connected. So this is the bottom half sections connected vertically. And then the top half is also connected vertically. Only the very top, the terminals are horizontal. Okay. So let's call it this red because it's the uh, positive terminal and then connect this one to this one and make it black. So now if I try to start the simulation, you can see that it lights up but something's wrong. You can see that it's actually have that explosive icon and if you hover it says the current LED is 483 but it can only support up to 20 milliampers. So what you need to do is connect a resistor to it to lower down the current because if you know the formula for um, electrical stuff is V equals to IR voltage equals to current over resistance okay but if you want to lower the current we can move the formula around equals to I equals to V over R so if we see the I is inversely proportional to the R, so if we increase the resistance, it will decrease the current. So that's what we need to do right now. So we move the LED a bit higher and search out resistor. So resistor and then add the resistor like here. So one thing to note, if you want to add in components, do not add components on the same section. Because like here, you can see that this these five holes are the same section. If you connect this to this, this essentially makes it so that, um, imagine this is like a pop-up, a 3D, okay? This essentially make it so that like, oh, these are connected. So you connect it like this. So this is basically like a parallel line. So if I connect um, the positive here and like this, the wire can directly just go here without resistors, so it will ignore the resistors, like the resistor doesn't exist. So what you can do instead is connect it up to different sections, so either like this, connecting the bottom sections to the top sections, or you could rotate it by pressing the R key on your keyboard, and then connect it sideways. So if, like, say you put a, a component here, you can also put a component here, like say I want to put an LED here, yeah, this also works. Okay, so let's place it back up here because I prefer my board to be like this. And then, um, I want to connect the cathode here way down here, but that's just too far away. And it needs two connections like this. Okay, what you can do instead is notice that there's two terminals, one from the bottom half and one from the top half. You can actually connect this up. So if I press it like this here and then here, and then change it a bit, color it red because this is a positive terminal, and then connect this part, this part, and then this part, and then this part, turn it black. Now the top part is also a, a working, um, like um, it can also help complete the circuit. So instead of me going down, I can just remove these, and then connect 
the whole from up here, the negative terminal from up here to the hole behind the LED. So let me move the LED first. Like so. Now, if you try to trace the circuit, start from the positive terminal into the resistor and then into the anode through the LED, into the cathode, through the black wire, through the negative terminal, go down, negative terminal, into the ground. So that also works. So this is how you try to connect um, the circuit out and not make it uh, messy. Now, if I try to start the simulation, it lights up. But this is a bit dim. So if you click on your resistor, you can see that there's three bands, red, black, and brown. And the value of that is 1000 kilo ohms. So let me change this to say 300 ohms. And you can notice that the color of the bands change from brown, black, and yellow. And the brightness of the LED is a lot brighter. So the minimum amount of resistance that is recommended is around 300 ohms. So if you go like 200, um, maybe 100. See, it, it, it gives you a warning that this might be a bit high. So go 300 and your LED is safe. Okay. And the lowest amount is somewhere about 1000 and then your LED becomes very dim. So 300, uh, 300 to 1000 is like a good range. Now, what if I don't want the LED to turn on all the time? I want it to turn on whenever I want it to. I can add in a button. So if I add in a button here, let me rearrange the circuits a bit. Okay, so how a button works is that um, for now, if the button is not pressed, okay, let me move the button here, but imagine that the button is here, okay? If the button is not pressed, the connection will look something like this, okay? So it will only connect the top part and the bottom part, or if I put it, this is just the same sections, right? Like, like I said before. But the moment you press the button, it connects this side to this side. So essentially, it looks something like this. Now, there is a bridge connecting these two sections, allowing a connection. So if I uh, remove this and add my button here, and I trace the circuit again, positive terminal go up to the resistor, the resistor to the button, and then the button to the anode, and then the cathode to the negative terminal. Now, if I start the emulation again, it starts off with the LED being off, and it, when I press the button, then it turns on. But what if I want it to have multiple brightnesses? Like, I want it to be 300 ampere, 600, and also 900 ampere at the same time. Like, I, I want to pick what I want. So to do that, you, you basically just add in a lot more buttons. So basically the same design like this, you add in a resistor, uh, I mean a button here, and then add in a resistor next to it, like before. Connect the resistor up, and then connect the resistor to the positive terminal. Let's color this so that it's more easier to determine which is which. So let me, let's make this orange, make this yellow. And then, notice that this one isn't connected to the cathode, and this one is also not connected to the cathode. So see which side the cathode, uh, which section this cathode is on. So the cathode is on this. The number three here, the one, two, three here. Okay, connect this part, the part that is the same vertically with the terminal one B here. Connect this part to the cathode, and then whenever I press the button, it will light up the LED. And then do the same for this part, the same section with the cathode. And then uh, the last button that we're going to add is this one. And then make this. 600 ohms and then the last one to be 300 ohms which is the brightest and then connect the button with the resistor let's make it green this time connect the resistor to the positive terminal and then connect the button to the anode to the anode yeah now if i press start you can see that okay the the circuit if you try to trace it it start from um from the positive terminal go up to the resistor so this one is a 300 resistance oh wait let me change it to 900 900 600 and then 300 resistance oh not 300,000 okay now um, if I press the button here wait let me see what's up ah okay so uh, this needs to be connected with the positive terminal sorry sorry that's my mistake so let me just move this like here 
Ah, uh, yes, there. There you go. Now, if I start the simulation, positive terminal, go here, po positive part of the anode to the negative part of the cathode to negative. Now, if I press the button, it will light up. So, see that this is um, dim. This is a bit brighter, a bit less noticeable. And this one is so much brighter. Um, brightness is a bit harder to see here. So instead, let me stop the simulation and change this LED up with a multimeter here. So a multimeter can give you an exact reading of the voltage and ampere. So if I start the um, simulation right now, it says 146 milli voltage. And if I press the button, it says 5 voltage, which is what we set here. Now, if I change it to ammeter mode, see, uh, ampere rich mode. If I press the button, you can see that ah, this is a very small uh, current, which is 5.56 milliampere. Which it is, it is bigger with this one, which is 8 milliampere, and then the the rightest one, the right one, is 60 milliampere. That is why the LED becomes brighter because there's more current passing this. Why? Because remember, I equals V over R. The smaller the resistance, the bigger the current. So that's why the light bulb is brighter. No. What if instead of 8, instead of 16, I want 10? Do I need to add another button and then add another resistor? And then what if I want 11, 12, 13, and 14? Like any number in between. It gets com complicated because you need to add so much button and so much resistor. That is where potentiometers come in. So now, let's talk about potentiometers. So, this is what potentiometers look like in Tinkercad if you search up potentiometer. So, it's potential, potential, but poten, oh sorry, potential, but potentiometer, okay. This is what a potentiometer looks like in Tinkercad. And here's an image of what it looks like from the inside. You can see that there's three terminals. The left side terminal, the middle terminal, which is the, the one with the wiper on it, and then the right side terminal. For now, we don't need to worry much about the right side. Let's see the left side and the middle, right? So the left side usually connected with the positive or negative terminal, depending on the, the way you set up your circuit, okay? Connect to the positive part of your terminal, and then the middle part is where it will output the amount of resistance. So if you turn it all the way up, it will it will give up more resistance, okay? So if you set it way to the left, it gives up zero resistance. So if you see right here into we're going back into Tinkercad. Um if I click on the potentiometer, it, you can set the maximum amount of resistance. So in this case, like what we're doing today, we want the LED to be 100 ohms. So to do that, we put in 100 ohms as the maximum. Now, if I try to rotate this, okay, it will be somewhere between zero because the left side is zero. This is supposed to be 500 and then this will be one, uh, 1000. So let's stop the simulation and try to connect it up with an LED. So how we do that is check the positive terminal uh, the first terminal connected to the positive, make it red. And then let's say there's an LED on the other side of the board, so uh, somewhere here at least, okay. Uh, and then we connect the negative part here, okay, like that. Now we need to connect the wiper to the anode. So first we cross the wiper to the other side, so the wiper is on the 11 section. So connect this wiper to the other section on this side. Uh, make it a bit higher because I can't see it. Yeah, there, like that. Now, since it's connected to the section over here, I can connect this part to the anode. So if I try to start the simulation right now, see, the light bulb lights up. And if I turn it, it becomes slightly brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until, bam, it burns out again. Because if you remember from earlier, it explodes or will get burned out if the current gets too high because if you set the potentiometer here, it becomes zero resistance. So what you need to do is still add the resistance. So let's remove this wire for now. Resistor. And then here. Remember, the minimum amount is 300. So let's change this to 300. Now, if you try to trace the table, follow positive terminal into this section. This section connects up to the um, resistor. The resistor connects to the first terminal, which is still from the positive terminal. And then connects it to the wiper, which will output our resistance. 
the variable resistance and then the wiper will go down connecting to this horizontal wire connecting to the anode and then if I try to start the simulation right now oh wait for that uh, you need to know that this resistor is in series with the potentiometer with how we set it okay because it goes from positive to negative in just a straight line that way the resistance is added up so this one is 300 if I set it to here it will be 300 plus zero so that's okay because the minimum amount is zero but what if I want the, the resistance to be 1000 exactly I don't want it to be 1300 if I set it to max that way you need to reduce this by the amount so the maximum amount you want is 1000 and your initial is 300 so just minus it so 1000 minus 300 is 700 so now if I made this to the maximum amount of resistance it will output 1000 so if I start the simulation right now you can see that hey the light bulb uh, lights up brightly too and if I turn this down, it becomes dimmer. So now you have a variable light. So if you if that wasn't clear, let's try adding multimeter again. So let me move this slightly to the left so that we can add our multimeter here. And then move this connected to this part. And then we start the simulation. Uh, and then change it to ampere mode. Right now you can see that the ampere is exactly at before 16 when it's at its brightest. And then you can get to 8, like before, and then you can get to 5, like before. But there's also a lot of in-betweens that allows you a lot more uh, options. And then that's for like life circuitry. Now let's get to the good part, Arduino codes. So instead of doing uh, circuits like this, you can also delete the circuit here, move this down. okay. Connect the positive terminal to the left side Connect the right side with the negative terminal Make it black And then the wiper Connect it to one of the analog pins So analog pin Let's say I want analog pin 0 Make it green Now If I open my coding section Okay Let's remove this Alright and make this bigger okay see that the pin connected here is a0 let's say that that is our um potential okay potential all right and then we print it uh, on the serial monitor so what what is serial monitor serial monitor is what the Arduino sends to your computer if it's connected to your USB port. So I want it to print the word potential and then not make a new line. So like on the same line, I would also want it to tell me what is the analog pin A0. Analog pin A0. So what's the difference between analog pin and digital pin? Because there's also an option for A0 here. Digital only has a low state or a high state. So basically just like something like zero or one. But if I want to read the actual like values here, I need to read an end login. So that's why I'm connecting the wiper to the end login. So let's take the end log pin and output it to the scenario monitor with new line. So every time it will print, it will say the potential and then the value of the potential. So right now, if I try to run the code, start simulation, you can see that it spams Potential is 1022 and if I spin this around the value changes. So this is one and Then goes up and up and up and up, and up to 1000 uh, What if I want it to be the left side is zero and the right side is 1000 just swap up the terminal So change it like this make this one black and this one red now, the left side is connected to the negative terminal and the right side is the positive terminal. Now, if I start the simulation with the terminal again, the right side symbolizes 1002, 1022. The middle is about 511. And then the bottom left is 1. So that way, I can have an input of variable numbers and read it from my Arduino. Okay, now that you guys know what a potentiometer can do, let's try making something.
I want to make a submarine. I recommend you guys to try and do follow my steps and we can build a submarine together because I really think it's fun. Okay? So, uh, where do we start? We know that um, if we try to run this code and then you see that in the serial monitor, it outputs the amount. Okay? So, this is basically what we'll be, we're going to use as our speed. Okay? And then if it's set to here, it's 1. And then if you go all the way up, it sets to 1000. So, since we already have a way to get the value, is there a way we can use this? Yes, yes we can. That is by using the digital pins up here. Um, but if you remember what I said before, digital pins are digital. Uh, there's a state of high and low. Then how come I want to output like a value somewhere that's not just ones or zeros? That is where the tilts here comes. So if you see, there are some uh, pins here. I have tilts uh, next to them. So tilts are like these wavy lines, okay? Next to the number. If you see, these numbers are actually meaning that the pins can like simulate what a uh, analog output is um, is um, the analog output uh, produces yeah that's what i mean so how to know like easily which pins are digitals and which are the analog ones so if you see the output section here there's two um options there's set pin and then set there's set pin number so if you set pin to high and low this means that this is all the pin numbers that can be used digitally. But if you set the pin to a number, see here, this is a number. Only, only six of these pins are able to be used as an analog. So we want this to be um, used here, all right? And then um, here, we uh, I set it to six, okay? See here, I set it to six. So we're using the pin right about over here. So what that does is it gets the number 1022 here and it outputs the number 1022 out of this pin number 6 here. And first, let's find ourselves a motor to connect the speed with. So this is the motor that I'm going to be using. Okay. And then let's say that our submarine is just the size of this breadboard mini. Okay, I'll put our motor right in the center here. So this is like the back of our submarine, if you can imagine it. Okay, so we can connect the ground to the left terminal because for motors, it doesn't matter which is um, the positive terminal or the negative terminal. It just determines the direction of rotation, but I'm going to set the left terminal to be ground. So let me drag this one over here and turn it black. And then let me connect this side to pin number six because i've set pin number six to be the one there. you can set it to any pin you want as long as it's the one that has the tilt here okay and then let me color this yellow because our motor here has a yellow gear okay and i'll pull this closer right up there now if i try to run the code see set pin six to and read and lock sorry read and lock one and uh, lot zero. Now, if I try to run the simulation, you can see that uh, when I set the speed to zero, uh, to like the lowest it can, let's say one, okay, you can see that the RPM here it says that the gear spin at 22 rounds per minute, which is very slow, really what we wanted. But unfortunately, since this is um, an analog pin, there's like a number range that's supposed to happen. But uh, since our potentiometer can detect numbers up to like 1000, if we scroll this up, it goes to 42 real quick and this, this spins at 900 RPMs, which is a bit too fast. And if we go higher, it goes up to like 5000 and back to zero. This is not what we want. So since um, the numbers here, we want it to be, let's say if I turn this slowly, to the number 21. 21 corresponds to the RPM is 400. We want the RPM to be at least like 200-ish because we don't want it to spin that fast but not slow. Okay, so 
for 200 it should be around 10 okay and then the maximum amount a potential meter can do is 1022 so let's pause the simulation for now 1022 how to turn 1022 to 10 we divide it by 100 right so let's divide it by 100 but since this one is 122 we will divide it by 102 so technically you should divide it by 122 and put it your uh, put your read here and this will technically output a percentage so it will be something like this is 1 if you put it up is 0.5 if you put it to the left is 0 so that's like 50% 100% and then you would ideally you would multiply it with your speed so like 50% of your maximum speed so say your maximum speed is 100 kilometers per hour or something but unfortunately this pin cannot accept like floating numbers you, it needs to be an integer so you need to like divide it by full numbers so if you divide it by float it will turn the output to a float okay um so divide it by a full number and then um we want it to like if right now if it's uh divided by 1022 it becomes like 0 to 1 but we want we want it to 0 to 10 right so if we want it to from 0 to 10, we need to divide it by 100. So this is the number we need. And if I change the one from here to the print, I also need to change it to the set pin. So it will need like two formulas here. The easy way to do it is by creating a variable. Let's say the name is speed. Okay, the one that we do, the, uh, the one that we did, speed. And then uh, basically, this is like um, like mathematics, simple mathematics. Like, oh, the variable is called x, okay, and then you say that oh, uh, set uh, the value of x to something, and then you want to print the value of x. So that will print the value of ten. So right now we want the speed to be what is the analog pin, but from zero to ten, from the scale of zero to ten, okay. So if we want it, uh, if we want to do it like that, we should set the uh, speed to this one, and then instead of using the formula, we can just use speed here. So every time we request speed, it requests the amount of here, uh, the amount that we calculated already. Um, let me remove X real quick. Now, if we try to run this code, you can see that the speed instead of 1000 is just 10, and since 10 scale to the motor is 200 rpms now um, your submarine will spin um, not that fast compared to earlier and if you want to slow the speed of your submarine down you can turn the cog up so like if you want to go half speed make it straight up so instead of 200 rpms it's just 100 rpm and then if you turn it way down it's the speed is zero so it's the, the the motor isn't spinning that's how you make a submarine move underwater but now your submarine can move but it cannot turn let's try changing that so to make it turn we first need a steering another one of the potentiometer and a servo so let's first start by adding another potentiometer so like before we need to wait let me turn off the code and then add in a potentiometer here okay you don't have to change the resistance but i like changing it to 1000 because it's like simplicity's sake 1000 ohms yeah uh that doesn't change the fact that um the input is still 1022 and it's supervised yeah okay so then we need to connect the left side to the negative terminal, the right side to the positive terminal, and then the wiper to the next pin that's free. So this is the A1 then, the next analog pin. So let's color it green and tidy up a bit. Make it clean when possible. There you go. Now uh, we have a second pot uh, potentiometer connected to the A1. So if we try to code that in, we just do exactly like this, but instead we change the name to direction. Direction. And we want it to print on the same line, so change this to without new line. So now it will print the speed and the value of the speed, and then it will print the um, direction on the same line, so it doesn't get confusing when there's like a lot of printing happening. 
So I'm going to add a comma there and then the right direction. And then we'll create a new variable called direction. Okay. And then the right direction needs to be set by reading it from the A1 pin. And then print the direction to the new line. And then set the... Let's say we want to use pin 3 for the direction, okay? So, oh, sorry. Delete, delete. You really need all right back to coding. All right, um, where were we? Uh, three pin three to direction. And now, if we try to start a simulation, you can see that the new potentiometer should be detected in the serial monitor. See, uh, speed zero, direction zero. But if I try to turn this, the direction goes up. See, direction five and direction ten. Since the direction of a servo, okay, let me show you what a servo looks like before proceeding. What we're going to be using for turning left and right is called a servo. A servo can rotate from 0 degrees, so this is 0 degrees, all the way up to like something looking like this. 180 degrees. Okay, the, the white part is uh, the part that rotates, okay. But we want to set this guy somewhere somewhere up here, I think. Right, I'll move that guy later. But um, you need to know that the direction the servo can rotate is from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. So let's try changing from 10 here so that it can become 180. So be because in output, there's an option to rotate servo. It automatically converts like 0 degrees, 180 degrees to um, the servo rotation. So we need to, instead of putting 10, we need to put 0 to 180, okay? Right now, you cannot put negative number uh, in this area, and you cannot put numbers bigger than 180 because that's just like, doesn't make the servo move up, uh, more than, because the servo can only move from 0 to 180. Okay, so how do we convert 102 to 180? First, we want to make it so that the number is, is actually from 0 to 20 because we want more like accurate directions because we're going to turn right so instead of 102 let's make it um double that so times 2 divided by 2 times 2 is this basically reducing the number here by half so this is 102 to 51 and then if i try to run this this is rotate servo 3 direction Okay, now if I try to run this, and then let me move to my potentiometer, the direction now has a maximum of 20 increments. So it can be 19, 18, 17, 16, 10 at the center, and then all the way down to zero. Now uh, the direction is more accurate than the speed. Okay, then um, since the maximum is, uh, what was it again? 20, right? The maximum is 20. And our number that we need to be like z the, the, the degree that we need to rotate is from 0 to 180, right? So what is 180 divided by 20? That's just 9. So we just add a multiplication math here times 9 and add our direction here. Now, if we try to run the simulation again, this should now say 180. See? So, if the summary is moving forwards, the degrees will be 90. And then if it's turning left, the degrees should be 0. And then if it's turning right, the degrees should be 180. That's perfect. Now we just need to connect um, the third pin to our servo. Let's just turn off the code. And then here. Okay, there is three pins for the servo. Two is for the power, the ground and the power. And the third one is for signal. Signal is what determines what the direction it will rotate. So this is for our servo tree, uh, pin tree. We need to also add um, a pin that will be set to high so that it gives our servo power. So let's set that as pin number two because pin number two is close to pin number three, right? So pin number two is for our power, right? So Let's connect the ground from here to our motor. So I think it's the top one here. Yes. Make it black. 
so that just borrows the ground from from our micro uh, microcontroller from the top parts here and then um, connect the digital pin 2 for our power make it red and I'll move this guy here here and here like that yeah like that and then lastly I want to connect the signal so that uh, it can change direction so signal is here 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 and here so let's ID this up a bit because it looks a bit cramped a bit higher and then since our server is colored blue I'll color this turquoise so that is how you connect up a servo so if I start this it should run properly so now you can see that the servo starts to rotate and if you're wondering why it's slow it's because our simulation time is slowed down right now to compensate for the fast like refreshing of the servo so the servo actually just turns 90 degrees in just like one second right just like that so now it turns directly forward just like we set it to our uh, from our servo and then our rotation speed is zero so let's try moving forward with our submarine so increasing up the speed a little you can see the rpm is 40 which is good which is good now let's try turning left so if I slide this to the left, see the servo reacted by turning left as well, like I did. So if you want to want, uh, want to know how this actually works in like real life, the back of the motor is like mounted to the submarine, the back of the submarine. So whenever the motor is turned by the servo, it sort of bends. So like right now, my servo is pulling the motor to the left. So technically. Even though the back of the motor is at the center, the front of the motor. Wait, let me click the motor. The front of the motor should should be like this. The front of the motor, but the back of the motor is still connected to the submarine, and it has some sort of like a pivot to make it turn left or right. What pulls it left or right is the servo. So um, whenever I set it to like oh um, left. Then the servo pulls the motor left and my submarine looks a little bit like right now it looks it pulls the motor to the left so it will turn right ah so this is actually the opposite direction of why I pointed so right now I'm pointing to the left right so I'm going to turn left but it pulls the motor it pulls the motor to the Oh yeah, 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 this is correct, this is correct. So right now, our submarine is curving to the left. Let me let me turn to the right so that I can explain it better. If I turn to the right, my submarine makes a sort of like a C shape where the back of the C is where the motor propels. So since the propeller is on the uh, is pointing towards the right, then my my C will like spin around. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put up an image so that you can see it better here. So yeah, that is how a submarine works. Now you have a functioning submarine in Tinkercad. All that's left is just building it in real life. Alright, that is all for Potentiometer. Thank you everyone. Goodbye. See you again soon.